This will be a fun experiment. We are going to be replicating this Enola Gay WP-40 smoke grenade. It's a wire pull device. We are essentially going to copy it and beat it. So Enola Gay boasts a 90 second duration for this device. That is not a good thing. We wanna make this thing dump more smoke faster. If you're using it as an obscurant device, you want that to dump smoke fast. So that's gonna be our goal and here we go. Okay, so what I did first was I found a mailing tube that was of comparable size, right? This is not a mailing tube. This is a handle for a some plastic cling wrap. And it's actually a little, it, its internal diameter is a little smaller because the cardboard is thicker than this device, but uh, it doesn't matter because I think we're gonna really kick its ass. The first thing I did already um, was to add a plaster of Paris plug to the bottom. I just mixed a little bit and dropped it in. I tried to keep it centered and not not clipping the sides and to avoid clipping the sides. And there's, I would say it's probably about a half an inch thick. So we're gonna start with this composition here. This is composed of 14 parts sucrose, 23 parts potassium chlorate, six parts magnesium carbonate, and 54 parts terephilic acid. You uh, Hopefully, well, maybe you've seen the previous video on terephilic acid smoke grenades. Um, they are absolutely bananas. I have yet to find a better smoke composition than this one. We're gonna, what we're gonna do first is load this thing up and compress it down. I just used this wooden dowel, which is pretty dirty, and I just banged it down with a hammer. This is a very small little version, and I am not feeling so challenged on beating this Enola Gay. I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to beat it, and so I'm not going crazy with it. But, you know, it's basically compressed to a solid, this powder, okay? And now we're gonna put a small layer of plaster on top of this. Uh, this is pretty soupy, but I guess we'll just have to to do it anyway because that's all I got. And now I'm adding... Hopefully that water won't penetrate into too much of that composition. So I'm going to... I want enough head space here both to prevent flare-ups, but also to accommodate the ignition system. Um, actually, you know what I can do? I can just, yeah, all right. This is hopefully enough headspace for that. Um, I'm, I've, fa I've come to find out that the exit orifice of the smoke device makes a tremendous difference in performance. And it's a difference between it exploding in a giant ball of flames and performing very well. And so I attempted, I did three attempts, well, three or four attempts using a cord out, using a big core in the middle of the uh, smoke composition, running down and then igniting it from behind. I'm not going to use that method for this. This device, um, in my opinion, the additional smoke composition out ways that having a inside core um, having that space avoid so in other words I'm just going to drill a small little orifice through this plaster and then just it'll be an igniter basically it'll ignite the smoke composition from that little hole and it'll just burn as a solid it's not going to burn from the bottom like you'll see in the larger devices we're going to be making so I'm just going to let this cure and then we'll be back Okay, this is dried now, this top layer of plaster. So now what we're gonna do, I know that I shouldn't drill this, but I'm going to anyway. And I know that using a Delrin rod in the middle while a plaster cure, bleh, while, a plas bleh, while the plaster cures is a better idea, but I don't have that size Delrin rod. This is about a 5 16 
All right, so that is the smoke composition down there. I'm gonna not dump this out so we have a nice messy desk to look at. Wow, that was not centered at all. Oh well, I'm committed now. So I'm gonna put this aside for a second and go over this igniter, right? So this is the igniter that I'm gonna use. It is not a time fuse. There is a slight delay because it is slow burning visco fuse. It's not fast burning visco, which is what I've been using. Um, I'm going to get all this fuse out of the way. I'm going to show you how these igniters work. Obviously, well, hopefully you've seen volumes one and two. Um, there is a lot of content in the last month or so that I've dedicated to these igniters. It's like, dude, you're obsessed with these igniters. Um, but this is a great, I'm going to show you how this works. shameless self-promotion if you haven't already heard I sell kits for these things um, at inventionincarnate.com alright so this is the visco fuse we're just gonna slide it in through here even we don't even need to go through the whole thing we're gonna slide that here we're going to add a, a small amount of primer to the end of this this is um, this is my ignition composition for those strikers. It's 56.2% potassium chlorate, 24.6% antimony trisulfide, 9% sulfur, and 10.2% ground glass. There's also 1% magnesium carbonate, just because it's a little violent. The magnesium carbonate, when it decomposes, it produces oxygen. I'm de decomposes, it produces CO2 which kind of just tones down the reaction a little bit, but it's pretty freaking aggressive. Now listen, you can use, now listen, you can use a whole bunch of different primers. You could use um, powdered sugar and potassium nitrate. You could use black powder, like meal powder, which is called meal D. Honestly, I'm not even sure. Oh, Meal D is the powder that gets screened out from screening corned black powder. You can also use ball mill black powder. You can use 50-50 antimony trisulfide to potassium chlorate. There's a whole bunch of different igniters that you can use. I personally... So in those kits that I sell, I add a double amount so i add enough stuff for 50 igniters but i also double the ignition composition needed for that those 50 igniters uh just so that people can prime fuses um so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to add 12 12 percent nitrocellulose lacquer which is 12% nitrocellulose and the rest is acetone. Um, I would actually not recommend this. I would recommend using PVA glue, which is just clear school, clear school glue. Um, the only reason I'm using this is because I need it to dry fast because I'm doing this video tonight. I'm sorry that all my videos are in the dark. Um, I do have a day job and I have three kids. Um, and I'm not making enough money to pay my $3,400 a month child support order. So I'm not making enough money on YouTube. So I have to continue to work at my real job. Right. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so this is the primer that we're using on this fuse, right? So it's just a little bit of this. Uh -huh, good job. I'm just going to pick it off with my finger. And then squish it onto here. Now, the reason we're using this is because it'll just more, it's a little bit more security for the ignition of that smoke composition. And yeah, so the nitrocellulose lacquer, it dries quickly, but it does not, it does not handle well. 
the PVA glue is a little bit, bit slimier, so it's a little easier to, a lot easier to manipulate like this. Oh, wait a minute. I'll just show you this one. I'm going to show you this one that I just lacquered up. All right, here we go. I'm holding this here. Well, that was cool as hell. It's really amazing how much um, that thing flares out. I mean, that's a, you can see. I mean, it's like spraying fire everywhere. Um, the, those fuses, it's kind of like, you know, I mean, it honestly would be better to use a time fuse. But we're going to do that on the next on the next uh, video or the next um, smoke grenade. We're going to the next Enola Gay we're going to beat. All right. So here's this one. It's pretty much already dry all we need is it to sit in there I'm not gonna add more antimony trisulfide because it is there's too much here as it is this is gonna be a little bit violent and what's gonna happen is is when this ignites when the smoke composition ignites it's gonna blast this blob of the the it'll probably be burning yeah, it'll blast a flaming blob of antimony tries of that ignition composition there. It's gonna blast it out. And this we can fit. I would be pretty surprised if this actually I gotta get a punch. Alright, I'm just drilling this side here. course yeah I can't find my punch my ro revolving uh, my revolving rivet punch all right so this is gonna go through here and this oh I'm sure that fuse isn't gonna <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shorten this thing because it's just going to fall out. It's just going to cross ignite. So CA glue does not stick to polyethylene. Uh, but I was using this, uh, this CA glue as a stopper. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so this will give us a very short delay but the, the the our objective here is to copy the Enola Gay smoke we want it to be the same compact design same size same everything and so when we cover this with foil um, we will all right, so this is still aligned here, this igniter. All right, so now we just have to put a ring on this. What about this one? Uh, wait, should we use that one? No, let's use this one. I always use these, the lock nuts. These are 5 16 inch copper crimp tubes for electrical stuff for like chickens I should have been an electrician I think I might still be an electrician if my YouTube dreams don't work out yeah 
I, I'm a general contractor, and it's fun, uh, but it, the profit density is not there, and it's like you have to find guys who aren't on heroin, and that's pretty hard. All right. Obviously, you could just tie this in a knot. I just think these are cooler. Okay. And now I'm going to cover this with foil tape. So this will just burst open. I like to put a little pinhole here so that it's not, uh, it just makes it a little easier to burst it because the more it retains, the harder it launches when it ignites, when the igniting smoke composition pushes out that blob of flaming antimony trisulfide. Okay, here's the one we made, and here's the Enola Gay. Same size. Um, this one's just better. Let's go test it. I'm going to call John. Alexa, call John. Calling John. You. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up, bud? You want to test out a smoke grenade? <laughs> All right, I'm coming to your house. <laughs> All right. All right, see ya. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're not going to blow. Listen, we don't blow anything up. It's just smoke. It is just smoke. That's right. It's not like Tim's over there manufacturing frag grenades. Yeah, just smoke. All right, I'll be right out. All right, see ya. All right, bye. <laughs> So that was the Enola Gay WP-40. I would say it appears to be useless for obscuration. Um, maybe it could be used for some photography um, applications. But, I mean, there was no wind. The smoke traveled straight up, and it was a very thin, narrow column. Oh, the shield was blocking it. All right, yeah. yeah. It's a still night. Is she having a conversation with the dog? No, she's she's watching Larry David. Larry David? Yeah, the um Kirby Enthusiasm. Oh yeah. That's a lame. That's good. No, but it's lame. It, it, it's lame. It, it 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 goes straight up, it doesn't disperse out. And it, and it, but it is a long burn. I mean, but long is not the goal. No. Unless if it's for signaling, I suppose. All right. Going right? Yep. more aggressive i would say it definitely i think i i, I think if i think you you beat it you, you yeah you beat the commercial one for sure yeah